Hey everyone and welcome to another All About RVs video tour. Today we're taking a look at this brand new 2024 Ahara 390 DS 5th wall. This is a two full bedroom, two full bathroom with a loft 5th wall. We're going to take a few minutes here walk you through the inside and outside of this upper end fifth wheel here, kind of show you what this thing's all about. And then at the end, we will also close it up for you and show you what it looks like closed as well. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are now up inside the brand new 2024 Ahara 390 DS fifth wheel trailer. Again, this is kind of more of an upper scale luxury style fifth wheel with a lot of nice, beautiful features that are upgraded to it. So as you see on the floor plan that was up, this is a two bedroom, two full bathroom with a loft fifth wheel. We're gonna actually start back here in the back and then we're gonna work our way forward for you and kind of show you what everything is all about. So on the very back of the RV, you have one of your two full bathrooms back here. So as you can see here, I left the back door open with the screen door closed. So you have a screen defender on the lower part. So if you have animals, That'll definitely help keep them from tearing things up, hopefully. You have the nicer little grab handle there to open it up as well. Uh, we'll get into more details about the door when we get outside as well. Over here, we're gonna have our step-in shower area. You have really tall ceiling height back here, so if you're a tall gentleman, you don't really have to worry about height back here. A very nice setup back here. There's AC ducts back here. There is a vent fan up there as well that goes up and down by power buttons. You have ABS tub surround, glass enclosure. You have porcelain foot flush toilet. And again, heat and AC both back here in this room. Let's spin around here and look at our cabinet area over here. So we have four drawers and some storage space underneath of the sink area. You have really nice solid surface countertops, even back here in the bathroom uh, and the front bathroom and the kitchen. They did a matching solid surface countertop set up there. You have, again, some controls over there for your monitor panel, your vent to raise up and down, some light switches, and a nice big medicine cabinet area and shelf space. So a pretty good bathroom back here that you could kind of consider a private bathroom for whoever has this bedroom. Now, let's shut this door here so we can kind of get a better look at our closet and dresser area here. So, there is a little magnetic catch thing on that door, by the way, so that it doesn't just flop around. But looking over here at our area, our foot area of the bed, you have your TV. You have a window there overlooking the door side or awning side of the RV. You have a little bit of a dresser top there, some drawers, hanging closet, shelf space and stuff throughout that area. So a pretty good amount of space. Now, just to kind of point out here, in these little hanging closet areas right here, they do have these little pull-out pieces that you're hanging your clothes on. So a little different there. Now you have soft clothes hinges on your cabinet doors and also on your full extending ball bearing drawer guided drawers that come out and you have kind of a dovetail finish here on your drawers and stuff. So nice setup. Magnetic catches as well. Over there, you're gonna have the digital thermostat for one of your three ACs. This thing has three low profile ducted ACs. You have a nice sliding door there to block off the bathroom for privacy. You have a window on each side of the bed. Those windows do open. You have overhead lights that are individually on off and you also have directional reading lights as well. These windows also have day and at night roller shades. 
which is pretty nice because most of the time you just only get a nightshade in your bedroom. Just wanted to show you this real quick. They even turned blue. So, kind of neat. But you do have a pretty good size bedroom back here. Now, right down below, you're going to see in a picture here, two large drawers that pull out from underneath the bed area. Let's step back out into the living room kitchen area. So above this bedroom that we're just now leaving is going to be a loft. So you have a built-in ladder here to take you up to this loft area where you have, again, more windows, there's shelf space, electric outlets, uh, USB charger ports back there as well. You got AC ducts up there also. Um, so you could sleep a few people up there pretty comfortably. All right. To your main slide out here in the living room kitchen area, you have very large windows here overlooking the awning and door side area here. Deep tent safety glass windows. They are the frameless style window on your outer wall sections. Um, so it kind of gives it that squared off look, even though they still are using the radius windows here. Um, they are using a really nice kind of wood finished off setup here to also keep the blinds where they need to stay. So they're not just flopping around as people walk in and out of your RV and stuff. Uh, just keeps it also a little bit, what I want to say, like less daylight creeping through. Um, so that's nice in your bedroom areas and stuff to kind of help for you guys that have issues sleeping when it's kind of daylight outside. Here you're going to have a dinette table that is actually attached to the wall instead of a post in the floor. So you have two traditional chairs and then two fold-up chairs. So depending on who might happen to be with you, you know, you can kind of use or not use all of the chairs. You have a built-in drawer right here that comes open, little dividers and stuff in it as well. So you can store some of your silverware and stuff in there. You have a matching slide floor material to your main floor. So you got that matching lino right there, just trying to give it that continuous look. There is a power theater seat right here, so you can kick back and recline back. You have little cup holders and stuff. There is a USB charger ports and also a little storage in the middle. Directly across from your theater seat is going to be your TV area. So you have a TV that is on a swing arm and that comes out. So you can kind of bring it out to bring it a little closer to your seating area if you want to. Probably I'd say maybe 8 to 10 inches it'll come out a little further. But back in behind there there's also storage. So you can kind of stash maybe some Blu-rays or DVDs or whatever back in there. Uh, just above, you have some storage up there as well. Now, down below, you're going to have kind of a little glass front flip-up area uh, door there that kind of hides an area under there for the radio. There's a light in there as well. There's an HDMI cable already run there, and you have two speakers beside that. Down below that, you're going to have your electric fireplace, which is basically a fancy electric space heater. But what's kind of cool here, this one actually comes out. And there is hidden storage back in behind that as well. So that's kind of nice. Looking back here a little bit further, we have our island. And you can see on the side of the island, there's two electric outlets. There's the propane leak detector down below. There's a couple light switches there. There is heat ducts coming out the side of the cabinets and stuff in different places throughout the RV here. Um, so there's no like in-floor ducting that you got to worry about like dirt and stuff falling down into. So that's kind of nice, a little different setup there. 
you have a flip up countertop extension here on each side of your island. You'll also notice the island is nice and wide, so it does give you a little more counter space up top as well. The high rise sprayer faucet right there. You do have a large undermount sink. It has this little strainer cover thing on it. Now the island itself is pretty cool as far as storage wise here. So you can see in this picture popping up, it has two trash cans in the one drawer here with a cutting board above that. You have a couple drawers or a drawer and then a flip down like a little sponge holder thing in the middle and some storage down below. So quite a bit of room to cram things in here. Now this right here in the center it's kind of neat. I always forget about this thing coming off, but you can actually take this off. So you got like this little paper towel holder thingy here. Uh, maybe you put some cleaner, whatever you got in here. Um, but it's kind of neat. Just kind of hangs on the door. If I put it on right. And again, you got those soft close hinges there. Now over here, you're gonna have the large GE oven. You can see in this picture popping up here, you got storage on both sides of that oven down there, big oven. It has drawer space on each side as well. You have a four burner stove top. The window back in behind there also opens. You have metal mini blind on that window. There's a light underneath each side of the uh, cabinet there an electric outlet on each side on the bottom of that cabinet as well you have the large ge microwave here along with storage above and beside that area as well over here you're going to have your ever chill refrigerator so it has the freezer on bottom two pull out drawers basically and the refrigerator on top now, kind of looking up at our ceiling here, you can see some really nice hang down pendant lining set up there. There's a large turbo exhaust fan right there as well, kind of above the uh, cooking area. So you've got your little vent fan thing on your microwave, but then you also have a big turbo exhaust fan up above that you could turn on in case you do happen to really burn some stuff or make it smoky in here. Over here, you're going to have a good size pantry area on the left with adjustable shelves, uh, removable shelves as well, if you wanted to take them out. You got some storage down below, little shelf area there, a counter area there that you could maybe set up like a little toaster, coffee bar, something like that, and some more overhead cabinet space. Now, in this cabinet, there is a motion light as well. And you also have uh, little hooks here if you wanted to remove a shelf or two, lower them down, and hang some coats and stuff in there. You got a little bit of storage area underneath of your step there, so you could maybe kick your shoes and stuff under there. There's a motion light that might turn on as we walk by it here. Um, there is a electric box with some breakers and fuses down there. Now, there is also um, some of your brain box, your control box right here. So you're gonna have your slide buttons, awning buttons, another slide button. This thing has four slides. A bunch of light switches, 12 volt tank heaters for cold weather camping, water pump, monitor panel for the front half of the RV basically, uh, for your holding tanks and stuff. There's going to be a separate area for the uh, back stuff. Um, there is the turbo exhaust fan controls, a dimmer switch for some of the lights, uh, inverter controls ordered with generator prep on this one. So we have generator uh, start, stop, and hour meter right there. Digital thermostat here for our propane furnace and one of our three ACs. Tire pressure monitoring system on the RV as well. This is a very important safety feature. Little uh, spray port hose for the outside utility showers that are out there. There's two of those uh, outside utility showers. 
Now here we have our second bathroom. So this would be kind of the bathroom uh, that everybody could kind of use that's coming with you, going in and out kind of thing, I guess. Um, also, the master or front bedroom is up in this area as well. So you're going to have your porcelain foot flush toilet down here, a one-piece fiberglass uh, shower here with the a uh, little bit fancier shower bar, glass enclosure kind of set up there, skylight above, turbo exhaust fan right here also. And you have, again, a little bit of space back there for the towels and linens and stuff that goes back kind of deep. Also has this little uh, magnetic catch for the toilet paper holder thing that's down there. You're going to have four drawers and some storage. Nice solid surface countertop here. A little bit fancier bathroom faucet. And you also have that medicine cabinet area above. Step in here. There is some more controls on the wall here. And then you're up into your big bedroom up here as well. So you have some shelf space over here on the left, another dimmer light switch over there, those individual directional reading lights, overhead lights. You have, you know, day-night roller shades up here as well. You also are going to have the drawers down below built into the bed, just like the back bedroom. That third air. Over here, you're going to have TV area. You do have four dresser drawers here. And this is kind of cool. This right here actually slides open. So you have kind of like some hidden storage under here. It has a little magnetic catch on it to help hold it back in place. Up here is going to be your hanging closet area right here, and it has one of those light-up bars. There is shelf space up above. There's prepping in the wall to mount a like Dyson vacuum there. There's an electric outlet right there as well, so that you could uh, plug in that Dyson vac to recharge it if you wanted to. Now this one was ordered with the washer dryer feature. Normally it's just prepped for a washer dryer, so you have a large hanging closet here. However, this one was ordered again with the washer dryer set up the way the customer wanted it. So you have the stackable Splendide washer dryer set up here. But overall, a very beautiful fifth wall here with a lot of really nice upgrades to it now we're going to go outside i want to show you around the outside of this fifth wall then we're going to come back in and show you what it looks like all closed up as well uh, one other quick note here this is pre-prepped for the wine guard gateway connect feature uh, which is a little box you can buy and basically subscribe to like AT&T or Verizon wireless internet service. All right, let's step outside, show you around the outside. All right, we are now back on the outside of the brand new 2024 Ahara 390 DS fifth wall here. And we're going to start here on the door side of the RV and kind of work our way around for you. So first things up, all new graphics package for the 2024 lineup for Ahara, so that all changed up. They did keep the same style, you know, aluminum studded, foam block insulated, high gloss fiberglass with the upgraded Asdale composite material. So construction wise on the walls and stuff didn't really change. Black metal skirting, just more of a graphics package change up. Now they did go to the frameless style window on the outside, which was a little bit of a change up. And it's got that square look to it, but it is a frameless style glass. So a little different. Now this one was ordered with the washer dryer feature. So you've seen that when we were inside, right there is a little dr uh, dryer vent for that. If you don't do the washer dryer feature, you will not have that dryer vent. 
You have two large power awnings here with the LED light strips built in, adjustable arm for tilting, manual override in the front arm head in case of an electronic failure. You have a six point automatic hydraulic leveling jack system. When you get into a large fifth wheel like this, it's nice to have the heavier duty hydraulic version instead of the less expensive electric version. So definitely like that heavier duty setup. Behind this first door right here is one of your two 30 pound propane tanks. That has the drop Z frame on it. So you have I-beam chassis but it drops down right around here, giving you a much taller storage compartment area instead of a straight frame. This again is done in order to give you more storage height. Pretty nicely finished off area for the most part. There is an outside utility shower right here. There is cable and satellite hookups, electric outlet, motion lights in here. This is the little repeater thing for the tire pressure monitoring system. And you also have that motion LED light strip up there. And then it has that uh, portable ladder that you hear me talk about a lot in videos right there. Just real quick, talks about 40,000 BTU furnace, hydraulic auto level jack, and slam lock baggage doors. This right here has a pretty large heavy duty door here. It's thicker, a little better insulation. You have metal slam locks instead of the cheap plastics and it's held up by magnetic holders instead of the cheaper plastic clips. Entry exit door here does have the window in it. This window again has that Lippert thin shade already built into it for privacy. So you don't have to worry about buying that aftermarket. You also have the touch pad entry exit lock. You have the heavy duty more ride entrance step here. This comes down, touches the ground, adjustable feet. It's rated for 500 pounds. So a little heavier duty than your traditional 300 pound rated hover style step or the 400 pound rated uh, Lippert step. So I like the little heavier step. You also have the shock assist on this. So you can see in that picture popping up right there, it's basically holding itself up. It's real easy to flip in and out of the RV door here when you are ready to travel. You have the nicer, larger, um, more ride grab handle here as well. Next to that is just a little sticker advertisement stuff there talking about your model number, the Four Seasons package, um, that uh, Care Camp uh, Cancer Foundation stuff there, the Asdale again. So a few little advertisements there as well. You have a little light there at your step area. Now, here's kind of a neat little feature as well. Besides having that shade built in, it has the screen defender also built in. It also has a nice assist piece here to help you get the door open. So just some little gidgets and gasmos that are on here that aren't normally on most of these fifth wheels. There's that second power awning. Now this one was ordered with the optional slide out awning covers you can see up there above that room. That would allow you to basically roll the room in and out without having to worry as much about you know, leaves and twigs and debris and stuff falling out of trees at the campground onto your room. It basically lands up on the slide topper and then as you roll it in, it rolls off the topper. So that's really nice. Also shades the room, repels a lot of water and stuff from rain. So pretty cool setup there to have those already on the RV. That is an option. You don't have to get them if you don't like them but a lot of people do seem to order them. You have an electric outlet right there in the center of the slide, so you could plug something in here as well. Now, right down below, you can see here, we have 17 and a half inch rated Cooper tires. These are H rated tires, and you have aluminum wheels, drum brakes, tire pressure monitoring system as well. And you also have that upgraded CRE 3000 suspension, which kind of acts like shock absorbers for an RV. Now, you can order it with an upgraded package and get like disc brakes and stuff. So if that interests you, consider doing that as well. 
There's a little black hole thing right there, a little flip up lid. That's where you crank down your spare tire. Spare tire is mounted up underneath the bottom of the RV. Coming around to the rear of the RV, you kind of have a traditional flat back rear end, nothing real fancy um, on that area. But you do have that entry exit door that you've seen when we were inside going in and out of that rear bathroom. Now you have that same nice more ride step with the shock assist, the same heavy duty handle so they didn't cheapen up back here. You have the same entry exit door uh, with the touchpad handle. You have the shade built into the window already, the screen defenders and all the stuff. A lot of brands, you know, put something on your main door and then cheapen up on the door that's secondary. Here, they did everything the same, so very nice. Um, you do have a towing style hitch on the back of this RV. You can see in that picture popping up there, there's a four-way flat there. There is a two inch receiver there with the little safety chain holder thing. And you also have, again, that little sticker there telling you, 3,000 pound tow capacity with a 300 pound tongue weight. So very important not to exceed those numbers if you are brave enough to try and tow something behind such a large vehicle here. Now, another nice thing I really like here safety-wise is it has reverse lights on it. You know, I can walk down through here and pretty much none of these other fifth wheels or travel trailers down through here have any type of reverse light on the RV. Here, we do have reverse lights. I think that's a really nice safety feature to alert people as to what's going on when you're trying to back up, but also just make it easier for you to see when you're backing into a campsite or something at night. Up top there in the left corner is the prepping for the Lippert portable stow and go ladder. Normally I'm telling you, you gotta get that aftermarket. Here you've seen it's, or you will see again when we get up to the front, it's already in the storage compartment, telescope down and collapse down. You can just throw it on there, basically get up and down on and off your roof for inspections and stuff. Now, in the top center up there, it is prepped for the Furion rear observation camera. That is another nice safety feature. I wish it was standard here, but it's technically an option that you would have to talk to the dealer about. Uh, but that is a nice safety feature to consider adding. Talk with your salesperson about that for sure. Now, you can see over here on these slides as well, you have slide out awning toppers. So when this one was ordered with that option, it put it on all four of the rooms. Down below right here is your back bathroom dump area. So you can kind of see up there, there's two pull out handles up along the frame right there for the back bathroom. So you got a gray black tank back here. You'll also notice there's a clear cap there as well instead of just a black cap. So you can kind of see if there's any mess in there before you open the cap and pull the handles out. That's kind of nice. No surprise, hopefully. Um, below the slide right here is going to be your 50 amp detachable power cord right there. That is probably, I'd say, close to 35 feet long, roughly. We'll see if it has a sticker at the end of the cord when we get down there. Uh, and your black tank flush also right there for the rear bathroom. Moving forward here a little bit, we have the Suburban on-demand water heater right here and your furnace also exhausting out right here. Now, looking underneath, just in front of the axles, you can see in this picture popping up, is your inch and a half fresh water tank drain pull valve. So it is the larger inch and a half instead of the smaller like three eighths drain that's on a lot of less expensive RVs. Um, you basically have hot and cold low point water drains down here as well. You do have a little light here so you can see what's kind of going on here at night. You have your dump hose holder right down here as well. Now to dump the front three tanks after you hook up your hose, you have electric gate valves up here for these. So you have your black and your two grays. So this is a little bit easier. You don't have to worry about reaching underneath of there. It's just done right here. You also have your front cap spotlights right here. You have an electric outlet 
you have the battery disconnect, a motion light in here as well, and you have water pump switch, cable satellite inlets, city water or water inlet in general, because you're gonna hook your hose up here and you're gonna direct the water where to go through these valves. So if you wanna fill your fresh water tank, do any type of winterization or clean out or whatever. Now black tank flush here for the front bathroom to clean that out. Again, you have that motion light up there. It has a motion sensor on both sides to activate that light. You also have this big telescoping ladder right there to go on the back. Now, right here you can see this baggage door is held up by shocks, so you don't have to worry about it opening too far and interfering with your slide out at all. Right here, you're going to have your second propane tank, which also has that auto changeover regulator right up there. Now you can flip the little valve and pick and choose which bottle you wanna start off with as well. Even here on your propane baggage doors, you still have the thicker, nicer baggage door, even though it's a propane door. Right here, you have some very important informational stickers right here. So first one up is gonna be the production date sticker right here. This tells me this RV was built 325 of 24. It has a model number again of 390 DS. We have our gross vehicle weight here, 16,880 pounds. Do not exceed that number. That's axle weight, hitch weight, everything combined. Don't exceed that. You have your VIN number here, also kind of tells you a little bit about your tire pressure and stuff here as well. But you have an actual tire sticker right here. It tells us we have 215.75R 17 and a half inch H rated tires. 125 PSI cold. They also supposedly, I think it's a 75 mile an hour speed rating that's on them as well. Um, so make sure you keep up with that also, just kind of your tire pressure and everything. And also know your speed rating on the tires of your RV. Very important. Uh, right here, you're gonna have your dry weight sticker. Basically telling us the RV weighed 15,055 pounds when it rolled off the assembly line with these options. Has an exterior length of 42 feet, 10 inches. Right here, you're gonna have the auto level jack controls. So this is again, pretty simple to do. You can manually control things, get it on and off the truck, but you can also auto level. Some instructions right here as well. And it has a little door that's lockable. Now, just kind of pointing out here, look at the big gap between your steel frame section here and up here at the bottom of that slide. A nice big heavy duty area right there for that flex point, I guess they would refer to it as on some brands of fifth wheels and frames and stuff. This is much less likely to have a flex issue or a crack issue. That's why you don't see a pre-cut or anything here like you would on a fifth wheel with the bed slide way down here next to the actual steel framing. So you have a lot heavier wall right here, you know, what I consider almost better construction of a wall right there for that purpose. Um, a lot of brands have a different bedroom type of slide system in the way they make the bed raise up and down and go in and out. And that makes for a smaller, narrow area there where Ahara feels the structure part of it is a little bit more important than the bed part of it as far as they consider that. Then they put those nice drawers under the bed anyway, so I don't know if it really matters that it raises up and down or not, because this one don't. All right, uh, moving forward here. We have the front compartment area. Now this one was ordered generator prepped. So if you do generator prep, or you can also get it with a generator, um, but this is generator prep. It's kind of all boxed out here, wired up and stuff. So you could add a generator to it. If you don't, you won't get any of this boxing or anything right here. Now there's room for a couple batteries to go right here. This also was ordered with the 2000 watt inverter. The solar charge controller is also in there as well. And you also have uh, your hydraulic reservoir for your auto level jacks and some of the guts and wiring of the RV. Now, speaking of solar, let's take a peek here real quick, check out the roof, because I forgot to mention that earlier. Looking up here at our roof, we have things up there like our three low profile air conditioners. 
We have our skylights, plumbing stack vents, different things up here. This was also ordered with 400 watts of solar on it already, which is again, very nice for you extended stay or boondocking type of customers, you know, to have that much solar already built into the roof up there. All right, now back down here on the ground, we have a really nice painted fiberglass front cap with some decals on it for the name logos up there. You have two nice LED glow lights, and then you have two kind of spotlights down below as well. You have the heavy duty Rhino pen box here. Now you can also upgrade these. So if you wanted to do like say a more ride pen box or a Reese goose box or something, um, they actually make the Reese goose box now that works up with the Rhino. You also could do, you know, a Kurt air ride or something, depending on how fancy you want to go. If you want to upgrade it, talk with your salesperson about doing something like that. It is a traditional seven way bargain wiring plug and also a breakaway cable there as well. All right, now I wanna step back inside here. I want to show you what this beautiful thing looks like all closed up and kind of get you an idea on that as well. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, we are back up inside the new 2024 Ahara 390 DS fifth wheel here. And I just wanted to show you what it looks like closed up. Now, when the rear bedroom is closed, we can't get through this door. So we're gonna actually go outside here shortly and walk through the back to show you what that looks like back there. But I went ahead and closed up three of the four slides here to kind of speed this part up for you. So you can see it is very close when everything is ran in. You have to make sure all your drawers, your cabinets, everything is buttoned up nice and tidy so you don't accidentally damage something. I could climb across my bed, get to my closet if I needed to, not really getting into my dresser area, uh, but I could come up here and sleep if I'm traveling and need to stop at a rest area or something. I could come in here and use this bathroom area as well. Now, let's close up things. So right here, again, all our slide buttons here. So this was for the front bed, and you got your... Uh, back bedroom, and then you had your two living room slides. The two bedroom slides are electric. The two middle slides here, kitchen living room slides, are hydraulic. So they move a little different and sound a little different when running them in and out. Now, you do have these little rubber sweeper gaskets on here. It's a good idea to put some conditioner and stuff on here so things slide around a little easier and they last longer that way. But when it's closed up, I could squeeze through here. I could get to my sink. I could load some groceries or something into my refrigerator if I needed to. But I'm not really climbing around back there and getting through anything. So from here, with the room all closed up, I'm basically able to get to the master bedroom, the refrigerator, and the bathroom. Now, not really getting to the loft, unfortunately, but if I needed to get to the back bedroom, I could come in through the back door here and go into the back bedroom. So as you can see, that back door right there will not swing open. It might maybe an inch or two or something, but nothing real crazy. But I could come back here from the back door and actually take a nap if I needed to, or use this bathroom as well. Now just to kind of give you a quick look as to what it looks like all closed up there with the slides. Nice sleek look. All right, folks, thanks a ton for taking the time to watch my RV videos. Greatly appreciated. If you don't mind, please remember to hit that like button. And as always, please remember to check out the folks at Couches RV Nation, guys. They're one of the largest internet discount dealers in the country. They should definitely be able to save you a lot of money on a new RV. Thanks again.